Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfet. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Safriya Palace the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawziya Zainal, and the Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Al Saleh. During the meeting, His Majesty the King reviewed with the Representatives Council Speaker and Shura Council Chairman the current health situation, the requirements of the coming stage, and the importance of unifying efforts for the interest of the Kingdom and its citizens, as well as the national health achievements to combat the coronavirus. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the two Council's heads and members for their national stances and efforts, hailing their support to the government's repatriation plans for citizens abroad according to the required precautionary measures. His Majesty affirmed his keenness on the return of all citizens as soon as possible, expressing appreciation to the Shura and Representatives Councils for their cooperation with the Executive Authority as part of the efforts of Team Bahrain to combat the virus. His Majesty the King commended with appreciation the efforts of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, praising the efforts of Team Bahrain in all sectors, institutions, and caters, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He expressed appreciation for the humanitarian efforts of Bahraini medical teams, health and nursing caters, as well as all concerned authorities. His Majesty also thanked citizens and residents for their implementation of health precautionary measures which proves their awareness and solidarity to overcome the crisis. He noted that the national history recorded noble stances for the people of Bahrain in solidarity. His Majesty stated that the health situation is reassuring and that the Kingdom will continue to take precautionary measures and proactive initiatives that ensure the safety of citizens and residents. He added that he is closely following up on the national effort to combat the virus, wishing all success. For their part, the the heads of the Shura and Representative Councils affirmed that His Majesty the King is the citizen's first supporter during this exceptional stage as his directives affirmed his keenness on supporting citizens' affairs. They noted that meeting His Majesty reassured them on the Kingdom's capability to overcome various challenges and circumstances, highlighting His Majesty's humanitarian directives and his gesture towards families affected by the virus's negative economic impact. They also asserted the two councils' support to all measures and decisions taken to overcome challenges primarily at the health level and the national economy. They praised the efforts of the government, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, to facilitate the return of citizens stranded abroad through the repatriation plan, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's leadership of the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting which was held remotely for the first time. The cabinet praised His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's directives to assist the families that have been affected by the outbreak of coronavirus. It said that this represents a noble humanitarian effort by His Majesty the King which reduces the financial pressures that such families are sustaining in light of these exceptional circumstances. Circumstances. In celebration of the International Day of Conscience, the Cabinet commended this initiative proposed by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, emphasizing the Kingdom's commitment to fostering a culture of peace and conscience by providing quality education and implementing public awareness activities that promote sustainable development. The Cabinet affirmed that Bahrain is keen on establishing and preserving the culture of peace and conscience through quality education, raising consciousness and sustainable development. The Cabinet affirmed that the health and safety of the citizens inside and outside the Kingdom remains a top priority for the government, especially those who remain abroad, whom the government has been keen on evacuating since the first days of the coronavirus outbreak. This made the Kingdom among the first countries that worked towards evacuating its citizens as per the highest medical standards. The Cabinet added that the national efforts that are being carried out by the medical caters around the clock is appreciated by all and said that the results of their efforts have achieved a favorable recovery ratio. The Cabinet then discussed the various methods to store strategic food and medical supplies following a presentation by the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism and the Minister of Health. Afterwards, the Cabinet condemned the terrorist attack by the Houthi militias which targeted civilians in Riyadh and Jazan in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, 
describing these attacks as a breach in international laws and customs. The cabinet also affirmed its full support for Saudi Arabia and its efforts in preserving its security and stability. The Secretary General of the cabinet then made a statement on the proceedings of the meeting, which was held through video conference technology for the first time. The statement said the following. The Cabinet reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Ministry of Finance and National Economy on the Kingdom's Economic Report for 2019. The Cabinet approved a draft law amending five current laws, the Bar Law, the Law of Regulating the Practice of Engineering Professions, a Decree by Law on Practicing Human Medicine and Dentistry, a Decree by Law on Non-Doctors and Pharmacists Practice of Assisting Medical Professions, and a Decree by Law on Regulating the Pharmacy Profession and Pharmaceutical Centers. The Cabinet approved the Kingdom's joining customs cooperation agreements and taking the required constitutional and legal measures aimed at enhancing joint cooperation between Arab customs departments as well as activating coordination in economic and commercial fields. Granting relevant authorities in Spain the right to legal jurisdiction over the data of its subscribers held in cloud computing centers in Bahrain was also approved. The Cabinet reviewed a periodical report that included the plans of the Ministry of Education and its efforts in the field of professionalization and training of educators working in the educational field as well as the ministry's efforts of developing programs that improve school performance in the field of advancing work mechanisms. The cabinet approved the renewal of the kingdom's membership in the capital secretariat and the Arab towns organization and the organization of Islamic capitals and cities. The cabinet followed up on the course of work implemented by the Ministry of Labor and Social Development to achieve the goals of the government programs in the field of social development and the implementation process of six projects that fulfilled the needs of villages and towns. The cabinet also approved a proposal to develop the citizenship curriculum in schools in light of the Bahraini society's nature, religious beliefs and social traditions. A proposal on establishing places of worship in Dimistan housing project was approved. The government responds on a proposal regarding the establishment of a public secondary girls school in Demistan was also approved. The Information Affairs the Minister Ali Ramehi asserted that the GCC health ministers underscored in their meeting the existence of tough preventive measures concerning movement between the GCC countries, which Qatar did not adhere to by exploiting the exceptional circumstance undergone by the world as a political and media card. In a brief statement to a conscience society program broadcast by Bahrain Television, the Information Minister stressed that taking advantage of the exceptional circumstances undergone by the world for political ends that are aligned to our societies is no stranger to the Qatari mass media. He added that bringing a group of people from Iran to Qatar and then Oman without the knowledge of any competent authority raises many question marks. The minister pointed out that the discontent of many Qatari nationals in many countries in the world would not allowing them to return to Qatar proves that the current circumstance requires many preventive measures and medical preparation that are being made by Bahrain in a well-studied manner and in cooperation with the relevant parties. He affirmed that it is unacceptable from a humanitarian perspective to exploit this matter by the Qatari mass media. The Shura Council issued a statement in which it strongly condemned the intervention by various parties in Qatar in the affairs of Bahrain. The Council said that this is an attack against Bahrain and misrepresents its efforts to evacuate its citizens as per the highest safety standards as directed by His Majesty the King and as keenly followed up by the government. The Council condemned the statement issued by the government's communication center in Qatar and expressed appreciation for the unity shown by the people of Bahrain, which undermines efforts that seek to exploit these circumstances to sow division and undermine the kingdom. Attorney General Ali bin Fadl al Bainin has pledged zero tolerance towards those who illegally and unethically take advantage of the current exceptional circumstances to compromise Bahrain's food security or to manipulate the markets through price hikes. Al Bainin warned that those who seek to influence the prices of products in any way would be referred to criminal courts where they would face prison terms of up to five years and fines of at least 5,000 Bahraini dinars in addition to the confiscation of 
of the products. The Attorney General issued the warning as the public prosecution launched an investigation after Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism inspectors reported they discovered three warehouses where large quantities of vegetables and fruits had been stocked since February to manipulate the markets and inflate prices. The prosecution summoned the inspectors to hear their testimony, seize the records of the fruits and vegetables in the warehouses and ask the ministry to take the necessary action to achieve abundance in all foodstuffs, reduce prices and protect the consumers. In line with ongoing efforts to prevent the spread of COVID-19, the Ministry of Health announced it has started conducting field visits across the kingdom to collect random medical samples using mobile screening units. The ministry stated that a specialized medical team, along with a group of volunteers participating in the kingdom's public awareness campaign to combat coronavirus, have organized the campaign to obtain random medical samples from the elderly owners of hypermarkets, supermarkets, cold stores, bakeries and pharmacies in order to save guard the community. The ministry added that additional precautionary measures will be determined for each of the kingdom's areas based on data and indicators received. The Ministry of Health continues to cooperate with the Ministry of Interior through the General Directorate of Civil Defense to ensure the disinfection and sterilization of various areas. The ministry noted that it further continues to cooperate with community police to ensure public social distancing guidelines are maintained. The Ministry of Interior affirmed that the engagement of the community police will the field visits is within the framework of its civic duties and public awareness efforts aimed at safeguarding the community. The community police will continue to ensure that citizens and residents follow the necessary social distancing precautions, including leaving the house only when necessary, the prohibition of gatherings in front of homes and public roads, exercising alone or with one person maximum, and leaving a distance of a meter between each person in queues or attending family gatherings.